The Lockheed L-1011 Tristar may not be the first aircraft that comes to mind when we think of aviation legends, but this wide-body trijet was once a technological marvel ahead of its time. In today's video, we're taking a fresh look at the Lockheed L-1011 in 2025, more than four decades after its final production. What made it special? Why it ultimately failed in the commercial world? and how it's remembered today by aviation enthusiasts. Back in the early 1970s, Lockheed entered the wide-body race against two industry giants, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and the Boeing 747. The L-1011 was Lockheed's answer to the demand for a smaller, more efficient alternative to the 747. Designed for medium to long-range routes, the TriStar was a sleek, elegant aircraft. Equipped with three Rolls-Royce RB211 engines a one under each wing and a third embedded in the tail with an S stuck, giving it a distinct profile. One of the most impressive aspects of the L-1011 was its cutting-edge technology. It was the first commercial airliner to feature a fully automatic landing system certified for zero-zero conditions a meaning it could land with zero visibility a groundbreaking achievement for its time. The autopilot system could manage everything from cruise to descent and landing, making it one of the most advanced aircraft in the skies. The cabin was another highlight. Passengers in the 1970s and 80s praised the L-1011 for its quiet, comfortable interior. The aircraft had a wide fuselage, which allowed for a more spacious seating arrangement, and advanced climate control systems that circulated air vertically a reducing drafts and making for a smoother ride. Even the lavatories were designed with innovation in mind, using vacuum systems that were quieter and more efficient than anything else flying at the time. But for all its innovation, the L-1011's story is bittersweet. Production delays caused by financial troubles at Rolls-Royce. The sole engine supplier, meant that the TriStar entered service later than expected day giving the DC-10 a head start in the market. Lockheed also struggled with sales outside the US, and the aircraft never reached the global success of its competitors. Only 250 units were built between 1968 and 1984. Despite its commercial challenges, the L-1011 proved to be a reliable and beloved aircraft among pilots and maintenance crews. It was praised for its smooth flying characteristics, robust construction, and safety features. In fact, it had one of the best safety records among early wide-body aircraft. By the 1990s and early 2000s, most TriStars were being retired from commercial service replaced by more fuel-efficient twin jets like the Boeing 767 and Airbus A330. However, the aircraft found a second life in military service. The Royal Air Force used modified L-1011S, designated as TriStar KC-1 and K-1, for aerial refueling and transport missions until 2014. As of 2025, no L-1011s remain in regular commercial or military operation, but several preserved examples can be found in aviation museums and even aircraft graveyards, where enthusiasts continue to admire their elegant design and engineering. Some are still used for film shoots, training, or static display. A few were even converted into high-altitude test beds and space-related platforms. Today, the L-1011 TriStar holds a special place in the hearts of aviation fans. It represents a bold chapter in Lockheed's history A1 marked by ambition, innovation, and resilience. Though it may not have achieved the commercial success of its rivals, it remains a symbol of what happens when aerospace design pushes the boundaries of possibility. So next time you see an old photo or a museum piece of the L-1011, Remember it wasn't just a plane, it was a glimpse into the future of aviation, built in a time when engineers dared to dream big.